what it is here in Nevada, and welcome to another video. Today we are doing something not different. It's like similar to my last short story, and similar to my Hitch Target scoreboard, except I dive a little deeper and look at some pers different perspectives. Like, yeah, I know it's not from the very beginning, and. I'm not sure I want to do it from the very beginning. It's like, for now, I can do just the helpers. The main three helpers. Plus an additional squishy crack. Yes. She happens to be there. <laughs> and, yeah. It's another video. Technically based off Stampy's Lovely World. I'll leave the, the target attacks in the description. Playlist. My... Gathering of them. Nightmares is not included. And stuff like Lovely Waterfall is not included. Because they were dreams. I'm doing original. Oh. They're all. <sighs> Things that actually happen. They aren't a dream. It's like Brainwave. And yeah. This one is probably the simplest of them. The other is a little more creative. <laughs> Heck yeah. They have to try something. Anyway, yeah, let's see how this goes. <sighs> Brainwave, Squashy, and William. During the events of Brainwave, an episode in which Hit the Target and Beaver Dash try to control the helpers' minds to steal the dogs for them. Squishy and William are told to go keep an eye on the two villains. This. Oops. This. Oops. This. This is what happens. As they approached Fortress Island, where they hit the target's castle is stationed, it seems awfully quiet. They hid so that no one would be able to spot them. Keeping an eye on them was his important job, especially since Stampy was trying to do something. And they really didn't want those two to mess it up. <laughs> no more than five minutes later, the two helpers spotted two figures practically charging out of the fort, taking two different directions. And I had to target them via dash! But as I watched, I realized that something didn't seem quite right. They were being mind controlled. They watched as the two villains disappeared, hesitant on whether or not they should follow them. After all, they wanted to make sure that nothing went wrong. They decided to wait a bit to see if the villains returned. When they didn't, the helper, two helpers decided to go back to the doghouse and see how things were doing. Especially since they were pretty sure that where that was where the villains had been heading. As they began to return to town, they noticed the two villains running away, back towards the fortress. There was also something flying overhead. They looked to be snowballs. But why would two powerful villains be afraid of snowballs? They finally made it back to Stampy and Polly. But not before they were being hacked by the skeletons. They were relieved to see that both of them were okay and seemed to have handled it well. And they couldn't help but be humored and intrigued with the story of all these snowballs of doom that had been formed to trick hit the target and Viva Dash to retreat so hurriedly. No doubt they would think twice before attacking again. And everyone was glad about that. Whenever the time came and the target did return, they would be ready. They had to be. That was brainwave. So, yeah. <laughs> there are some that I didn't do because, well, one, it's kind of redundant. Because <laughs> we already know what technically happens. It's like, the helpers go to the fun land. It's like, and they're helpless. It's like, the helpers go to the fun land. Wait for Stampy, he doesn't come, and then they return. And yeah, basically happens in I Can't Win, too, so. <laughs> basically redundant. 
Like, I'm not gonna do the same two stories twice. So, <laughs> I gotta continue with horsing around. What pity saw? It was another colorful, beautiful day in the lovely world, and Biddy would have no other way. He liked spending time in the whole, the whole day in his bedroom. Go, he circles as fast as he could in a minecart while drinking milk. A bucket of, a bucket of milk. It was fun. But when Stampy came to visit him, he offered to tour him around the place. The elephant was delighted to take along. It would be twice the fun. But it didn't take long before things began to turn. And soon, a happy cheerfulness slightly turned more serious. He didn't like serious. Fun was the best way to go, and he wanted to keep it that way. But when Stampy discovered the hit target and beef dash, two people he hadn't met before, Fiddy, <laughs> things began to change. Fiddy understood that it was risky and dangerous, but he wasn't much of a fighter. But he couldn't just stand around and let his new friend get attacked like this. But before he could do much to help, he was forced to run away from the conflict. Chased uh, too far behind by Viva Dash. He didn't panic or freak out. He decided to use what he had and try to trick or trap her in some way. He got Viva Dash to chase him around for a bit, trying to figure out what he should do next. Suddenly, he had an idea. So he waited for the perfect moment. He finally to himself was thinking of the idea. It's going to be so much fun. Pretty soon, he noticed that Viva was starting to slow down. That's what he acted. He spun around and jumped on top of a block, leaving on top of the roof of one of the buildings, watching as she pursued him. The look on her face was both puzzlement and both of puzzlement and confusion. Finally, Busy found a way up to the top to pick a pet pet shop and waited for the villain to arrive. When she got to the top, he acted as fast as he could, giving her no time to react as he shoved her off the building and right into the squid tank with a splash. <laughs> Busy watched for a few moments as she struggled to stay afloat. <laughs> he humored by her flailing and angry expression. That served her right from chasing him away from helping his friends. Suddenly, he remembered that his new friend was still fighting against a very bad man. He hit the target. He had to do something quickly to make sure he didn't have a chance to win. Because if he did, he wasn't sure if he wanted to know what would happen. No, if what would happen if the target went. Busy went down from the Bigger Pet Pet Shop leaving Viva to figure her own way out, and ran back to the opposite... What? The doghouse, not opposite. There we go. Ran back to the doghouse, spotted his friend chasing him to target on horseback. Suddenly, the elephant had an idea, and charged toward it at the target. He was on his horse, gravelly he always kept with him, and lassoed the horse pulling it in the villain towards the sake sandwich restaurant. Hit the target looked at him with confusion and uncertainty. His look of surprise was unmistakable when Fizzy tied his, hit the target's horse up so that he was bungee jumping. <laughs> it looked so funny. And a look of horror on the villain's face was priceless. But the funny elephant could be too amused by that. As the tiger leapt off the horse and ran off the edge, landing on the boat, rowing away. Billy was glad that they dealt with those two villains. And after rescuing the horse he had lassoed up, they spent the rest of the day having fun. No doubt. He would give Harry plenty more rides to thank him for the brave deed in helping his new friend. Have that's that one. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that was a little creative on my part. <laughs> to be honest, I don't really know. It's just coming up with my own idea. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Saving the world. This thing will stop dimming. <laughs> Saving the world. Silence. Sneak attack. <laughs> Billy. No, Billy. <laughs> Busy expected to have a full day of fun. He even built himself and a few sheep a roller coaster to ride on. And no doubt he probably would have had much more fun if his friends were with him. But they were working. William was looking around the town to see where they would could put the next build, and Polly was checking on some redstone to make sure it was on tip it was in tip top shape. They were doing the jobs that they were assigned to do out the lovely ink skyscraper. And so far, it was so much fun for him. Not a tap boring the office that we had made for him. Carnival, yes. I had a big imagination, and he had big enough space to use that imagination. He was sure his friend would understand. <laughs> Did he continue to ride the roller coaster? Not being able to hold back the screen as he watched the sheep on. Go round and round with him. They seemed to be having so, as much fun as, as, as he did. But his fun was suddenly interrupted when he heard a familiar voice coming from the town. He turned to see Stumpy hit the target and the dogs coming towards him. The busy left and left out of the minecart, cautiously approaching, unsure of what was going on. Why was Stumpy was hit the target? Wasn't he supposed to be the bad apple to bunch? Was that even a phrase? Oh, hello there, uh, elephant. A familiar voice said, catching the, uh, catching the elephant momentarily off guard. Stimpy never called him elephant. He always called him by his first name. He only referred to him as elephant on occasion. Never directly. Billy looked at Stimpy and his detective. Delighted to hear that they had been wrong about hitting the target all along. He was a friend the whole time. He was so happy and glad, but it all changed when he heard his friend's frantic voice coming through. Talking fast and quick. The elephant heard every word. Something was right. The target had done something very, very bad. He had to do something to help. Suddenly, he spotted two figures slightly behind him. Recognizing William and Polly steadily approaching. He must have seen the two of them coming this way and went to see what was going on. They had to have heard everything. <laughs> the elephant instinctively poured out the bucket of water he had in his pockets. Just as his target went to turn on the machine that the elephant had only just noticed. Was that how this was happening? Why was he the target doing this? But he knew they could stop him. He had stand a chance. Sure enough. His plan of destruction worked perfectly as he watched it the target run back to the island from which day he came from, and hopefully he would stay there for a long while. Served him right for trying to attack his friend. It was going to step too far for him, and, this way, and he did what he could to help his friend, even if it was his own in his own unique way. He was busy elephant after all. Yeah, a twist on second world. To be honest, I could kind of relate. <laughs> you can't always notice everything. Yeah, to be honest, it's very interesting. <laughs> you could take that however you like, to be honest. But we have the next one. And the most recent one so far, because, well, yeah. Once we did one up Viva Dash. <laughs> once we did a lot of about Viva Dash, that would be a whole twisted story. <laughs> yeah. She's a very interesting character. They all are very interesting characters. Hollybot. Obstruction. Investigate.
guess you know what this is about. So huge clues on this. I'm following the video. And yeah, there were five episodes separating them technically. But if you thought about it, there would actually be more in between those videos because Christmas kind of messed it up. <laughs> oh yeah, you can take that how you like. If you want to figure out how many videos are your space in there, by all means, watch the videos. But yeah, just focusing on what happens before Polly Bot episode and during Polly Bot episode. Yes, those are two important factors in this. Short story. If you haven't done so already, be sure to like and subscribe so you'll see more. And if there are any scenes that I need to add in the near future, I will surely do that if you leave the comment down below. <laughs> yeah. So, if, for whatever reason, the next target attack happens shortly after Stampede continues his lovely world videos, and there's something I could add to this, by all means I will, but we'll see. Because I have a hunch that it's pretty soon. If you have forgotten it, let me know and I'll do a video on it. <laughs> Polybot Abduction and Rescue. <laughs> Life in the lovely world couldn't have been any better than it already was, starting every morning on her balcony, which could be seen in all the way to the tempest balcony. It was always nice, especially when she could attempt to throw her snowballs towards his balcony. Just for fun, she enjoyed building new things, doing random, and playing minigames with her friends, but never could imagine anything would go wrong. On one particularly fateful day, something had happened that she hadn't expected. She was helping her friends build a jump in minigame when she'd noticed something was going on over by the ship shuttle. This is a comment by someone saying they thought they saw her there, so I'm just going off that. <laughs> she decided to go and check it out. Just to make sure that nothing had happened to the game. After all, there was a possibility that not so nice things could spawn there. Better to be safe than sorry. She informed William that she was going to check something out and would be back in a bit. But as she neared the game, she was suddenly ambushed by a hit the target. It would come out of nowhere. She realized relatively quickly that she had no way to defend herself. And a man would most certainly attack her if she tried to run for it. Run for it. So she did what she was told. Looking back sadly as she watched her friends all obliviously building while she was she disappeared from sight. Person who hit the target. But why? What could he ever want from her? She wasn't sure. One thing was for sure. It couldn't be good by the Stampede or his lovely world. She had no way to warn him or call for help. But now, she was on her own. It didn't take her long, take long, blah, before she arrived at the fortress. Forced to walk inside with the target right behind, holding a knocked arrow tightly against his butt. One false move, and he shoot her. <laughs> she didn't know what else to do as she walked in. Noticing a cell in the corner of the room, beside it, the strange machine. Hit the target forced her towards the machine, as if it stood outside by some control. Watching the reindeer, as the reindeer went into the machine, horrified when she noticed a quick glimpse of a sign that what was meant to be. She watched helplessly as Viva turned on the machine, and she heard... Loud noises of her still working before it was finally done. 
she tried to look to see what had happened. And saw there was a second version of her. Robot version of her. A version that worked for his target. That was meant to act like her. Separated the dogs. Stop her friends from stopping those awful villains. She watched as the villains exchanged some words before its target freed her from the machine and forced her into the cell, blocking the only way of succeeding. She didn't know what else she could do. No one else would suspect that anything was wrong, and there was no telling how long it would be until someone figured it out and rescued her. She, was just, she just hoped it wouldn't be too late when the time came. No, I'm not crying. It's just sniffles. <laughs> Two months had passed by very slowly. As she sat in her cell, watching the villains, as the villains did their own thing. They normally left her alone and ignored her, only giving her what she needed, like a bed, food, and such. And she was their prisoner. And there was not much she could do about it. She hated being cooped up like this, unable to do anything. All she knew was that her friend could be in a lot of trouble very quickly. Finally, one day, Polly watched as two, the two villains hurriedly prepared for something. What were they planning to do? Were they going to attack Stampy? Was the bot with her friend? If so, then he would be in great danger. Especially if he thought the robot was her! She just wanted to hope that her friend would figure out who was the real Polly. Because if not, she could be stuck here forever! She didn't want that. Polly watched anxiously as the villains left the castle. Something that didn't normally happen. One would usually stay to keep an eye on her but they had both left to deal with whatever plan they were working on. She was alone, and sometimes extreme, in this sometimes extremely hot and ex sometimes extremely cold castle. <laughs> she was used to the cold. After all, she lived in the North Pole. But this was a little more than she could bear. She wanted to know what was going on, to do something. But she felt helpless, and the only one who knew what horrible thing could happen. And she didn't want to be part of it. As she sat alone in herself, trying to figure out if there was anything she could do, she had a voice that she recognized. A voice that filled her with hope and relief. But when she looked up, she saw a friend, Snappy. He had frozen for a singing light moment, surprised and confused. She went over to the bars of herself. Hoping her friend would see that she was indeed the real Polly. Didn't take long for him to figure it out. But also it didn't take long taking long villains for the villains had realized that the cat had found them out. But due to her friend's quick thinking, he had turned the robot or polybot as he called it against her owner its owners and attacked them. It's an it. <laughs> it's an it. <laughs> Chasing them away. Polly felt a wave of relief overwhelm her as the cat freed her from her imprisonment, reflecting on everything that had occurred. Yes, she had missed so much. As she could see when stepping out of that awful place and seeing the town she had gotten to know as her home. She listened to her friend's apologies, appreciating them, even though she didn't need them. She knew her friend was just being himself, and that he never would have let this happen if he had known what was going on. She was just glad that they were both safe. And no doubt, they would continue to have great fun together, because being free, happy, was the best thing she could ever wanted. At that moment, that wouldn't change in the slightest. She was certain of that. <laughs> Very forgiving of you, Polly. <laughs> yeah. That is 
set up that. <laughs> that is the end of that story. And only other stories so far. And as you can see, it also means that it's nearing the end of this video. And just want to let you know. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. Comment down below what other ideas or perspective you want me to see. And I'll collect them in one bunch so I can read them all in one thing. <laughs> yeah. I've read for several hours at one time. So yeah, I don't have a problem reading <laughs> for half an hour. It comes down to it. <laughs> Yep. Time to go downstairs. Okay, be there in a sec. Buddy, downstairs. I know, I'll be there in a sec. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys later. I have to go. Go, go. Bye. <laughs>